time of coming back here to Kehi Lagoon. Uh, State finally opened it up after what, two, three years. It closed. So I got my Akuma Guy Select Pro. This is a 9 foot 9. Got my uh, Helios 30 with uh, it's not really light line but 8 pound braid. So this is kind of like my multi purpose braid using a bait holder hook with, that has sickles on it to hold the uh, grub in. Hook is offset using Bill Newton's new rattle bomb. Listen to that. It rattles. Yep. So we're going to use this today. And beautiful place. A lot of the canoes are gone. Just a few remaining, but not like before. Very windy day, so um, I was going to go with some uh, surface lures, but the surface lures would not be great today with the wind coming directly at me. So I'm going with the uh, build new rattle bomb. See what happens. Now the rattle bomb is a subsurface bomb subsurface resin float it has rat uh, rattling noise in it which is probably BBs and I'm using a uh, leader with uh, CHL the um, old baby the orange scrub I really like this scrub I've, I've done very well with it okay, so I didn't have to put the uh, barrels this complex kind of class barrel suit system on it was very good so I just kept it on so look at the float see look it doesn't sink it just stays right under the water. I'm babying this too much. Because I'm only using 8 pound. Baby too much. I'm going to put a little more oomph into it to go against the wind. But you see it coming in, look at that. Just under the surface. Perfect, right? You see the rub right behind it. Windy days like this, see the leader here? It's about five feet. You don't want to have it longer than that because what happens when the wind is coming at you and you're whipping directly into the wind, it'll cause the needle line to loop into itself and you're gonna start getting knots. Last time I was here, God, I was well back, that's when I uh, came with my friends uh, John Bretta and Jeff Robles. That was years ago. But the, the rattle bomb, is, it makes that rattling noise. You know? See that? As a rattling noise, so see what happens. Just like this, because I'm walking to the wind, I go down like every, I don't know, 30, 40 feet or so, take a cast, walk down, take a cast, and my line's not gonna get too far out, but I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get more distance on those casts. So what I'm doing is I'm working the shoreline here, trying to see if I can find a place where the fish will hold up for, usually it's a topography, if there's like, um, topography like a reef, um, boat upon, whatever, that's where the fish should be hanging out. So I'm trying to get an idea of where to go. And the last time I was here, what taught me was, if you remember correctly, this spot right here where they rush the canoes from, this was the spot that I was catching papillos the last time. 
I'm gonna break down for you the way I whip, which is being casting. You don't have to do it my way. Okay, but here's my, actually this is my favorite rod. Guide Select Pro, nine foot nine, it's a good length. Helios 30, which is also a, a really good reel. So what I do, um, you know, I like distance, so I usually go nine and a half minimum for distance. This is 9.9, .9, so that's good for that. I look at the tip. That's kind of like the action I want, so I get a whiplashing action when I toss my bait. Main thing is accuracy. I mean, distance is good, but accuracy. So this is the way I hold, hold it, right? Thumb on the top. And what I do is I point, see the, uh, over here, the guides? It faces my target. So if I'm facing that way, that creates friction. Face it that way, creates friction. I go that way, line it up with the tip. Like say I want to aim towards that shock on that island out there. That is what I do. And instead of choking up here, now we're gonna choke up. That means I'm just gonna give a short cast. But I want to go long, I put my palm onto the butt of the rod. This is the way I do it, like this, and I hold on to it, all right? So, what I do, okay, and I'm gonna, I'm putting my palm here, and I'm aiming my guides over there. Okay, now because of the curvature of my body, because it's not um, a 90 degree angle, if I aim that way, it will go this way, as you just saw. So, if I want to go that way, I still aim that way, but I aim roughly right there. Okay. So, look at that. Boom, see, straight line. I aimed that way towards the tip of the island, but it went 100% directly at the point over there with the shack is where it's where I, what I wanted. It's kind of like shooting an arrow in the wind, a rifle long distance. You gotta allow for that type of curvature, and you just don't want to aim for that one spot because you always end up to the left of it if you're accurate. Always go to the right of it. You just have to figure out how much and the length of your rod will dictate that and the curvature of your body will also dictate that. Everybody's different. You wanna have an enjoyable day on the water, just know what your limitations are and um, you enjoy yourself. That's the main thing. It only takes a few minutes to do what I'm showing. Oh, I like these rattling hammer bombs. Nothing yet, we'll see. Point out a common mistake that uh, a lot of people do. I say if you want, you just pull on your line. Oh, it is tough. I can barely pull on my line. It's because you cannot see it from here because the line is so light, but the tip of your line is wrapped around your rod tip. If you try to cast that out, it will snap your rod tip out, especially if you have more counterweight on it. Now, this happens a lot when you use longer rods. So I always test first before I cast. I look. Look at that, see that? It got wrapped around, look at that. You always test first because uh, it's kind of humbug when you gotta go send it back to the manufacturer saying, oh, the chip snapped off when you could have prevented that, okay? So now you're ready to rock and roll again. All right, another problem that you might encounter are wind knots. Now this is braid, so you're gonna get more wind knots in braid than you would in mono, but it does happen. So when you're casting, sometimes you feel a thud or the, the cast isn't smooth, it, it, like, it, it stops at something, it continues. That means that your knot was bent in the wind and it created a wind knot. 
and that thud you feel is going through your guide. So you need to cut that out and restring everything all over again. Trust me, because uh, one of these days you're gonna get a hit and that's that, that wind nut is gonna create a weak point and that's where the line's gonna break. See that over there? That's what I'm looking for. It could be a, a large branch that snagged on the bottom. Uh, could be a rock that's just break the surface, but I'm looking for objects like that because the smaller fish will find protection in that and the bigger fish should be around looking for the smaller ones. So I always look for uh, structures or places like that that I can cast next to and my chances of catching something is a lot greater when I do that. And now the winds are picking up, I mean really picking up. So I'm going to head further down into the cove area. Problem when you do something like this too, is you don't want to be that close because if something hits, it hits, it could run directly into it and there goes your line, right? my back is coming around the corner over here to see how strong it is but it means that I, I can cast farther because the wind is roughly at my back look at that just send it up it's just going 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 that was pretty damn far and I was just being very gradual on it this I kind of look for areas like this but because the, the drop is so close to the shoreline I can cover that going into it anyway This has been one of my long time testing areas. It was uh, closed down because the state was doing some kind of renovation on it. Looks like they kind of cleaned it up pretty good considering what it used to be with the, uh, with the homeless and all. Glad to see the KT Canoe Club is still out here. Only Humble King is waiting for that. Uh, here it comes. Waiting for my rig to come back. You can see how the orange CHL grub looks like behind it. Looks good. Going more south. Nice cove over here. See that beautiful cove. Uh, when this place was shut down, I just went to the right, the small little right away in the back there and I get to the canal park. Um, took a friend there from California. He did good. He ended up with quite a few barracudas there, but uh, I'm just working my way down. If if the uh, main parking lot area was closed today, I, I would have just gone over there. You notice that was just a gradual, non-oof kind of catch and I already covered over half the cove. This place, I've never really got big, big fish out of it, but I've got some decent barracudas. Oh, take it back, I did get some big bone fish over the years here. Generally, I don't think I've kept anything from here. I usually ended up giving away if somebody was around me because they'd scream bloody murder if they see me trying to throw it back. Sometimes bringing stuff in here, I get a small little lizard fish, which I keep because that's bait. Okay, let me break down my fishing backpack. This is my AO insulated cooler. I think it's ready for either 18 or 24 cans. Don't remember. Now, in this main pocket here, I have some gloves, um, toilet paper, obvious reasons. I got a flashlight, some cast assist devices, which are hammer bombs. Pre-made lit uh, leaders already hooked up with my hooks. Braid scissors. Be extra beads, hooks, um, nail clipper, um, more cast assist devices. I got some um, um, swivels, just about everything you can think of. 
watch it. Let me see. I got some lid in that one. This other side one, some terminal gear, um, pliers, um, brace scissors. Um, yeah, there you go. My my little standing measuring device. I love that. In my main compartment here, I got some poppers, snacks, fillet knife, a uh, bottle of frozen water, and two jugs of uh, energy drinks. So I'm all set. This is this is what I come in. I'm, I come in very uh, light. Got my rig all ready there. Just taking a break. Spend a couple hours. So I have an energy drink.